All right, my friends, here we are in episode number four of the Dayton and Troy Electric Railway. Thank you for joining me here. Uh, we are continuing our progress west, and uh, I'm not going to lie, this area isn't super interesting. <laughs> at least, uh, it's a little bit more desolate. I'm looking at it on the track plan here. We have a uh, another depot, uh, a trestle that we're going to run into, and another depot, and then a town called uh, Vandalia. Uh, so this was kind of an interesting sort of section to do, I guess. I mean, I, I can't say it's not interesting. It was it was a little bit challenging. Um, as I was talking about in the previous episode, the problem with the backdrop, um, that I should have made it a little bit wider, a little bit thicker in the middle. Uh, you'll start to see that here when I'm trying to lay out some of these mountains uh, that go, not even mountains, these hills, I should say, that, that go right up against the backdrop. Uh, it's really hard to bring a hill up to that backdrop without affecting the scene on the other side of the backdrop. Uh, so this is an area that I really wish that I had kind of made it a little bit wider. Um, I do sort of spread it out a little tiny bit, but man, I have to, next model railroad I, I do, I really have to remember to, to, to not, to not make this mistake. Uh, anyway, speaking of mistakes, right here, this is one of them. If you look at the original track plan where I'm putting this gas station, it was supposed to be a river, the Miami River. Uh, and I didn't realize that until I, um, until just a minute ago when I looked at the track plan preparing myself to do, uh, to do this voiceover. Um, but you know what? This is a scene that I really don't think I would have been able to turn into a, uh, into a proper river scene. Um, it called for the road and the train tracks to go over a river while going upgrade. Um, something that is doable in this game, although I just don't know how well it would have turned out if I had done that. Um, I'm, I'm kind of glad that I ended up just doing the gas station and the grade up. I think that it looks a lot better than if I tried to put in uh, a trestle here um, and try to bend it around the curve or something like that. I don't know. It just there's no way that it would have worked. So it was kind of a, what we would what we would call in the film world uh, a happy accident. Uh, I totally overlooked it, and it ended up working out better than uh, than it. You know, would have if I followed the directions properly. <laughs> um, so anyway, here we are. We're, we're working our way around uh, uh, around the bend here, and um, just trying to blend in uh, the scenic sort of elements uh, from the city sort of elements. I guess if that makes any bit of sense. Um, the idea here is that we're we're leaving downtown Dayton and we're going through the countryside. So we need to have a little bit of a transition area where we go. Uh, where we exit uh, a lot of these downtown buildings and get into something that's a little bit more suburban, a little bit more, uh, a little bit more naturey sort of thing. But uh, we can't have too much of an abrupt change. So I think curving that road uh, into the backdrop and putting a little gas station there and then hiding everything with some billboards and some trees and grasses and stuff like that uh, really helps transition the scene in, you know, visually around this bend. Uh, and kind of hide that backdrop and, and divide one scene from the other uh, without actually having to have some kind of a division point there. Um, and I think it works pretty well. I think maybe there's a little bit more details that I could add in here, a little bit more life that I can that I could add. Um, but I, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how it how it turns out. Um, again, just trying to detail this little gas station here. I was trying to think of what would be at a gas station in like the 1920s and 1930s. I don't even know how common a gas station would be back then, but this seemed appropriate enough. I think this is like the Flying A uh, gas station or something like that. I, I want to say it's even built in, um, but I've seen it used so many times and there's even uh, like a, a, a version of it that uh, I think Walters sells uh, for HO scale or N scale uh, that is supposed to be sort of period specific. Um, so I just wanted to junk it up a little tiny bit, put a couple junk cars there and a parked car or two. Uh, again, keeping in mind that there wasn't really a ton of vehicular traffic back then. Um, somebody had even mentioned to me that there might have been horse and buggies. Uh, so that's something that I need to maybe add later on or, or review. I'm not, again, I'm not an expert on this era. Uh, this is just sort of a, a dabbling art experiment in uh, something a little bit different. Uh, but moving on to this scene here, it just says that this is a trestle. It doesn't say that there was supposed to be a river underneath this or anything like that. Uh, so I kind of pictured this as maybe like a dry riverbed or uh, maybe just like a gully or something like that. Uh, so I used uh, just a pretty generic um, trestle to, to bridge the area. Uh, and uh, I, I like the way that it turned out. I added some rocks in there and, and some vegetation and stuff like that to, to kind of just spruce up the scene a little tiny bit, make it feel a little bit more grown in and um, 
little bit more uh, out in the woods kind of feel. And I was so happy that the the span that uh, that I that I picked that I selected uh, for the the width of this bridge um, was just perfect enough for the the catenary to to span it without putting another spline point in the middle. I was really worried about that. I'm like, how am I going to stretch catenary over top of this gully? Um, it's just going to be floating. Like, what what is my answer going to be to that? But it was just the right length uh, that I was able to just have it have one uh, support on one side and one support on the other side and uh, with the wires just going right over the top. So that worked out really nicely. Um, I guess if it didn't work out like that, I probably would have cut it to be the right the right size, but that was one of those things that I didn't even think about until I got into it. And I was like, oh man, this is gonna be a problem, I think. Um, so I think right here, what I'm trying to do is find the depot, a depot that I wanted to use. And I was digging around, uh, just flipping through some different assets. I don't think that this was supposed to be like a big depot. Um, there's not even any buildings or anything, any other houses like listed as being around it. Uh, so this might be like a train orders sort of spot. I'm not too sure because we have sort of a passing track here. Uh, so it might be one of those sort of deals where a uh, train would stop, get orders to find out, you know, is there another train coming in the opposite direction? Do they need to wait? Can they proceed? You know, that, that sort of thing. So, um, and what was cool about that building is that I could label it and on the track plan, it's just labeled as uh, D and T depot. Uh, so simple enough and uh, elegant enough, I think. And now on this side, this is, uh, what did I say the name of this town was? Uh, Vandalia, and there's another D&T Depot on this side. And I kind of liked this little spot because there's it just lists like a couple of houses like on like a dirt road, it kind of looks like on the track plan. Uh, so it kind of reminded me of Mill Creek in uh, on my P&B route, um, where I just kind of had like a row of old houses uh, down a dirt road that are just sort of built right next to each other, sort of like, um, uh, what do they call them, like at, at coal mines, like the uh, the workers' houses or something like that. I forgot, they have like a special name to them. Uh, but that's kind of what I was picturing in my head, just this sort of lonely road, maybe off in, off in the wilderness somewhere. It's not quite populated enough, but, uh, you know, everybody kind of set up shop right near the train tracks because that was the, you know, that's where you could get your goods from. Um, so again, uh, there was a depot there and I think I added a, a little bit of a, a platform. I kind of imagined that they, you know, for these houses would have some kind of a goods, uh, way to get goods off of the trains, um, to get it to whatever local businesses might be there. Maybe the depot even is a little general store, who knows? Um, so I ran into a problem with the catenary through here. I had to use, uh, the single poles instead of the, the double poles, uh, because as you go around this bend and you can see it here, I had to separate the track a little tiny bit to actually get like a curve that didn't, you know, clip anything together. Um, didn't clip train cars that are on adjacent tracks and uh, didn't clip train cars that are on the same track uh, going around too tight of a bend. So I was forced to use the single one, uh, the single poles, which I think is fine. It still looks good. Um, and it's just, it's just sort of a transition scene. We're going from one city area. We're going from downtown Dayton through the countryside, and then we're eventually gonna come up uh, in the next episode to Tippecanoe City. So there's gonna be another freight house there um, and that sort of thing. So this is just our little countryside transition uh, going from one part of the city or one city to another. Um, and again, I'm trying to add some little details here. I didn't wanna go too, too crazy with this because again, I'm not, I'm not sure what type of goods you would really find here, uh, especially like um, uh, period specific types of like clutter. I don't want to say clutter, but you know, like boxes as far as boxes go and um, building materials or shipping materials, stuff like that. I, I'm, not, I'm not too certain. I think everything kind of came in these big crates, which is what I've been using. Uh, so I was trying to stick with that. And I uh, added a few other people that I, I think look pretty good. Um, and then again, I'm just sort of sprucing up the area with some trees and some grass. Just still using these STRMM trees. And I ran into uh, sort of an interesting bug with these things recently, a couple of times, um, where the trees just seem to disappear, the STRMM trees. And I'm not, I don't know why, but they, I load up the map and everything is there except for the trees, any of the STRMM stuff. And if I quit the game and then reload it, relaunch it, everything is fine, it's back. So it's sort of a, a strange bug. I don't, I've never experienced it before until just recently, but it seems to be happening again, um, again and again here and there. So I, I don't know, maybe other people are having that same same issue. Um, 
But anyway, I like how this scene is shaping up. Um, I like this little country road sort of aspect, and it does feel like a little little slice of the countryside just kind of going through. And it'll look a lot better once we actually cut out the use the dig holes to cut out the foreground and put the fascia down and make it feel more like a model railroad. But that brings us to the cinematics, and uh, that's going to do it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to hit that like button and all that sort of stuff. And I'll see you guys in episode number five.